Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 360 for FTC series. This is the fifth video in the series and if you haven't watched the first four videos, I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the corner. Last video we looked at constraining sketches with the constraining tools within Fusion 360 and in this video we're going to be looking at parameters within the sketch workflow. Um, so first let's create a sketch and take a look at what are parameters. So parameters are located under the modify drop down menu here right at the bottom and right here under change parameters and um, the parameters pop up it has um, a few sections in it so there's three sections favorites user parameters and model parameters the only one that you can um, ch add anything to is the favorites and the user parameters so um, the parameters are basically um, values and expressions that you can then use in your sketch and other places in your model once we get out of the sketch workflow in a couple of videos we'll take a look at where they can be used there um, so they update all the references they update everything that references them and so you can use um, math in them you can use um, values such as pi you can use trigonometry you can use operations they have minimum and maximum built in and many more functions the full list of functions will be in a link in the description below um, so the values that are changed in here will be automatically updated inside the sketch if you've referenced them and inside here you can reference other sketch um, parameters so let's take a look at creating a parameter so if I go ahead and click the plus icon here this is how you create a parameter get a pop up here and so if we enter our name so if I do a, a test parameter this is going to be the name that we're going to reference this parameter with and then for the units we have um, many different units to pick from so we have all of these units there's tons and tons of units and no units so for right now we're going to create a rectangle so I'm going to choose millimeters as my unit and for the expression, um, I want my rectangle to be 50 millimeters wide, so I'm going to put in 50. So right now this value is 50 millimeters. Um, if we changed it to degrees, let's say, then it would be 50 degrees. Um, and we can look at how to do math here in a second. So I'm just going to put that in for now. Um, if we want to do math, what all you have to do is you have to t um, type in the the um, the code for the math. So, for example, if we wanted to do sine, we would type in sine here, and we could do sine 30, and it would output um, 0.5. So, um, there's other codes such as inverse sine would be a sine, and then you can type that in like that. And if we did um, a sine 1 or a sine um, then we would get the value so and you have to make sure that you're using the right units um, so for the the inverse sine um, you're going to want to change this to either degrees or radians so um, if we put in degrees and we put in 1 then we get 90 um, and of course you can reference other parameters so we if we just start typing in test parameter then we get our test parameter there and if we change this to millimeters and we want to do times two let's say then we we get a hundred um, so that's how you add them and if you want to add one to your favorites you just click the star you can uncheck and then it will come out of the favorites so let's try a very basic example first where we're going to create a rectangle and this is going to be the width of the rectangle and the height is going to be half this so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, get rid of this so we can name it properly and this is going to be rectangle width and we're going to keep this on millimeters and our expression here um, is going to be 50 and for the rectangle height we're just going to put this in 
and our expression is going to be rectangle width divided by 2. So we get half the height is half the width. And now we have this. So if we click OK, um, you'll notice that it saved our parameters up here. And so we can create our rectangle. So if I just create a rectangle dimensionless and I add dimensions by pressing D, um, we can start assigning these values. So this is our rectangle width. So we're going to put this in. And it's going to automatically set that to 50. And it says F of X. And that means that it's a parameter. Um, and then we're going to put our rectangle height in. And now it's 25. And everything's correct. And if we went to change these values, you, we would see that it's just the rectangle width that's actually inside here. So you can do math inside this box too. So if I wanted to do plus 50, then it would do plus 50. But it would not update this value because the math for the value is being done inside here. And the rectangle width is still 50. We're just adding 50 here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And now let's say we want it to be, um, we want to change it so it's twice as tall and twice as wide. So what we would do is we'd go to change parameters and we would change this value um, by clicking on the expression here. And you double click and you get inside here. And we would change this to 100 millimeters. And then everything would update properly. You see the values update. And if we go out, we can see the sketch updated properly. Um, so that's basically it. You just use math and um, figure out what values you need. Um, so my challenge to you for today's uh, video is to create a law of sines triangle um, using parameters. Now Fusion 360 already does this for you. It already figures out where, how long the lines and the angles need to be after you've given it enough information. But it will be a good test to see if you understand how to use the um, parameters and by creating this. So there, it's going to solve a miss the missing sides and angles on a triangle when an angle side and angle pair is given and another side is given. So you're going to use the law of sines um, which it, and, and then um, you're going to calculate the side lengths. So it should look like this in the end, where this is my side A, which is given, angle A, which is given, and side B, which is given. And inside my parameters, try not to look at the math I did and see if you could figure out how to do it on your own. This is how I have it set up. Um, and all of these dimensions, these um, the missing dimensions are driven dimensions. Uh, so try your best to see if you can figure it out. If you need to look at what what um, code you need to use to get a sign and inverse sign, um, the link is in the description, but it's, it's a sign and sign. Now give it a shot and see if you can figure it out. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance and you figured out how to do it so I'm going to show you how it's done so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up our parameters so we're gonna get rid of these by clicking the X here oh um, so we're gonna get rid of this one first because the height is rectangle um, referencing width so if we get rid of height then we can get rid of width um, and we're going to start by adding our side our side length a and this is going to be a given length. So I'm going to put 20 in. And we can change all these values later. And then I'm going to, and that's in millimeters, of course. And then I'm going to add my angle A. And this is going to be in degrees. And I'm going to use um, 65 degrees for my angle A. And then I'm going to use side length B. And um, I'm going to put in 18 millimeters. Now, everything else from here is unknown and we have to solve for. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to solve for angle B. And the way we do that is we do, we set it up and we make it so that we're solving for angle B. So, this is going to be 
um, inverse sine, oh, whoops, that's the name, so we're going to put this down as angle B, and we're going to set this to degrees. So we're going to do um, inverse sine, which is the A sine, time, uh, with uh, B, side length B, times sine A, angle A, divided by uh, side length A, and that gives us our angle B. Next, we're going to solve for angle C, and the way we do that is very simple. We're just going to set this up with degrees again, and we're going to do 180 minus angle B minus angle A, and we get 60.3. Um, and lastly, we have to solve for side length C. So we're going to put that in with millimeters, and for this, it's just uh, side length A times sine angle C divided by sine angle A. And that gives us our values. So we have everything set up. If we create our triangle now with the dimensions given, so I'm not going to put on the origin, let's just put it over here somewhere with arbitrary, it's all connecting. So if this is side length A, B, C, angle A, angle B, angle C. So this is going to be side length. Oh, let's make sure I got that dimension in the correct orientation. Um, this is going to be side length A. And then this is going to be angle A. This is going to be uh, side length B. And now um, we can see if, now we can put all the other angles in. So if we do, this is going to be uh, angle B. And this is going to be um, angle C. And it, Fusion has already calculated all the stuff, but we're just going to put it in anyways. And this is going to be this. All right, so now we can check if we got angle C and side length C right. And this says 60.3 degrees and 19.177 millimeters. If we look, 60.3 degrees and 19.177 millimeters. We got everything correct. And now we can use these values that we calculated for in other uh, sketch dimensions. So let's say we wanted to create a rectangle um, here that was the same length, uh, the same, it had the same side length, the same uh, width as uh, side length C, then we could just put that in with the calculated value. And there we go, we got it. Um, so that's a very handy tool. Uh, it's really useful if you set parameters up properly uh, it makes things very easy, it makes things easy to change. One way to use it, um, which is very common, is with an offset tool. So if we add a parameter and we call it the offset, and let's say our offset is 5, um, then a very common way to do this is to offset something um, with the offset. And flip this. And now, if we ever want to change this later, once we're outside the sketch, all we have to do is change parameters and change this value. And if we change this to 2, then we see that updated properly. So this is very easy. It, makes, it takes the load off when you're editing and creating sketches. Um, that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll be starting to create the screw and the nut that I showed last time, and this is going to be done with the parameters, and it's going to be um, changeable. You're going to be able to change the parameters, and everything will update properly. So uh, I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you in the next video.